Hello, my name is Brent Ramsey, Technical Advisor for Cinema Products at Canon USA. Today I'd like to introduce you to the enhanced video features of Canon's new flagship DSLR, the EOS 1DX Mark II. Chances are if you carry any model of DSLR in your bag, you've already been asked to shoot both stills and video. With this camera, you're going to feel just as comfortable shooting video as you do capturing great stills. The EOS 1DX Mark II builds substantially upon Canon's professional top-end DSLR series that includes the EOS 1DX and its Cinema EOS counterpart, the EOS 1DC, starting with a new 20.2 megapixel 35 millimeter full frame 24 by 36 millimeter sensor. Inside, there are two new Digic 6 Plus imaging processors, so you can expect some serious imaging enhancements. But here's what I want to concentrate on. The EOS 1DX Mark II shoots DCI 4K high resolution video, which is 4096 by 2160 or 17 by 9 at 2398p, 24p, 30p, and 60p. DCI resolution is formatted for cinema delivery, which is slightly wider than UHD 4K video. And get this, when you shoot 4K, you can save 4K frame grabs directly from the video in camera. But more on that later. The EOS 1DX Mark II also shoots 1920 by 1080 full HD video at 2398, 24, 30, and 60p in either MP4 or .MOV format. And it adds a full HD high frame rate movie shooting mode of 120 frames per second. So you've got a great slow motion speed to work with. And being a true global camera, the equivalent PAL frame rates are available as well. If you've shot video with one of Canon's full frame DSLRs before, you may be thinking, yeah, who doesn't love the look, but holding focus is super hard and so much of my footage ends up soft. Yeah, that may have been the case, but not so fast, because now for the first time in the EOS 1D series, and for the first time, on one of our 35 millimeter equivalent full frame sensors, the EOS 1DX Mark II is equipped with dual pixel CMOS autofocus. If you haven't had a chance to shoot with dual pixel autofocus before, you're gonna be shocked by its unique power to grab, hold, and shift focus as you shoot while letting you stay in control. Now this system has moved way past the contrast-based AF that you may be used to, and it's into sensor technology that employs split photodiodes to accomplish phase difference detection AF. And this surveys the scene and it drives the lens in the proper direction to acquire focus. This excludes unwanted searching and accomplishes precise natural focus acquisition with speed and reliability. And perhaps more importantly, with control and adjustability. And dual pixel autofocus works for either 4K or full HD. So now you can expect reliable focus control in any video mode using any autofocus capable EF lens. Dual pixel autofocus achieved tremendous success in the Cinema EOS line of pro cinema cameras like the C300 Mark II, but it's only been available up until now on DSLRs with the APS-C sensors like the EOS 70D and the EOS 7D Mark II. So let me just show you how it works with the EOS 1DX Mark II. There are two AF methods to choose from. The first is FlexiZone AF, which displays a square that you move around about 80% of the image area to switch to or set focus. And in FlexiZone AF, you can also adjust the AF sensitivity. Do you want the focus shift to be super quick or roll in softly? There are 10 settings for that. And there's Movie Servo AF Tracking Sensitivity Response Settings. Now this will aid in determining the speed the camera acquires a new subject or ignores subjects crossing through the frame. There are six settings for that. The second method is Face Detect and Tracking AF. Now this helps you acquire, shift, and hold focus on faces as they move through the frame. And get this, there's an improved algorithm that will recognize a human body well enough so that it can track focus on a face even when the face is not recognized. Now you can see that working in sports, right? 
And there's another improvement to the algorithm of color detection that enhances the tracking capability of moving subjects. And this enables more stable tracking. But how about this? Just select an object. Stay with it. There's also one-shot AF. And this works with face recognition or FlexiZone tracking. You can set this up as an assigned custom control button, configure it to work at a half to press of the shutter button, or simply use the AF on button. One shot autofocus is great for a quick focus confirmation before or during shooting, and great for situations where you don't want or need continuous autofocus. And this is really cool. There's a new high resolution touch panel monitor display, which allows you to touch the screen to acquire focus on an area of the image or a subject's face. So how's that for simple, huh? You can also select the sensitivity of the touch, standard, sensitive, or turn it off altogether and prevent an unwanted change by accidentally touching it. In that case, if you turn the touch panel sensitivity off, you could still get a solid focus control with the multi-controller button. So serious control of focus and depth of field is firmly or lightly in your hands at all times. Now here's an option in camera that will aid you tremendously, especially in handheld or uncontrollable situations. And that's assigning a camera button to temporarily disable or enable movie servo AF. What this does is act like AF lock on a Cinema EOS product. It's an easy way to temporarily turn off continuous dual pixel autofocus, hold the focus mark you just had, and then press to activate continuous dual pixel autofocus again. I've used the set button for AF lock. I like it because it's easy to reach with my thumb and it's not used for anything except menu selection. AF lock can be configured with the shutter button and customized four different ways. Now this could offer you a way to remotely control those combinations of functions with a wired remote extension cable from up to 33 feet away. And it's great for when the camera is say mounted in a tree or behind a backboard. And let's say I'm setting up for a rack focus between subjects, or I just wanna stay really fluid. I could enable disable dual pixel autofocus by using the depth of field preview button on the front of the body. In this case, it doesn't lock when depressed, only as long as I'm applying pressure. It's very convenient and especially good when handheld. I suppose if you want to stay old school, well, you can always just use the magnification, and that's adjustable in increments up to 10 times. Zoom in, check focus, and keep shooting. I know you get the point. There are many ways to control focus when shooting video and lots of options to operate the camera using it. Now this allows you to concentrate on making shots and keeping great composition. Okay, so let's look at some other noteworthy EOS One DX Mark II features. First of all, for the basics, how about simple ergonomics, like switching from live view shooting to movie shooting with just a switch. Recording media has been upgraded. There's one CFAS 2.0 card slot along with a slot for a CF card. The CFAST is what makes possible the recording of 4K frame rates of 50 or 60p or full HD at 100 or 120 frames a second. So now you have reliable and larger capacity drives capable of capturing high data rates. Let's talk about deliverables. The 4K files are recorded as 422 8-bit motion JPEG. This codec is also the one used for 4K acquisition in the EOS 1DC. It essentially produces a separate JPEG image for each frame of video. It's very high quality and it's delivered at very high bit rates. Full HD files are recorded with MPEG-4 AVCH264 compression with variable or average bit rates. They're wrapped as either .mov format or as MP4 files. Now, while the MP4 compression method is the same for .mov files, .mov files can be recorded as either all-i intercoded frame or IPB interframe, while the MP4 files are recorded only as IPB. The main difference is that with all-i files, each frame of video is captured as a keyframe, a single separate image. IPB breaks video down into keyframes and subsequent predictive frames. The bottom line is, 
all I Dot .mov files will be better for frame accurate editing situations, while mp4 files are superior in compatibility for playback across numerous platforms, and they offer longer recording times, and they're easier to share, even right from the camera. The good news is that either mode is available in camera, so the choice is yours whatever your project's needs. To give you an idea of how the various images are acquired off the sensor, the 4K movie area is 4096 by 2160 and uses essentially the area inside of this JPEG still image, which is 5472 by 3648. The full HD area is approximately 35.9 millimeters by 20.2 millimeters at 1920-1080. The EOS 1 DX Mark II offers clean, uncompressed 4228-bit full HD from its HDMI port. Now, this output is customizable, and it allows for the use of a monitor or an external recorder. It can be captured and displayed in several ways. You can now grab a JPEG still frame in camera from the 4K video during playback. Now, why are 4K frame grabs so important? Well, a 4K video file will potentially give you thousands of frames to choose from, and they're small enough to share in JPEG format right from the camera. These frame grabs are full 4K size stills, about 8.8 .8 million pixels, yet relatively compact, but they're super easy to share across devices using a Wi-Fi accessory like the WFT E6A or the new WFT E8A. If you add the Wi-Fi accessory to the camera, it will not only allow you to share files, but unlocks remote operation options. This shares the camera's functions with tablets, laptops, or smartphones using a simple browser window from several hundred feet away. You can send images or MP4 video files to your smartphone for quick review and file sharing. The EOS One DX Mark II includes a headphone jack for monitoring audio, and it has a 3.5 millimeter mini jack line in for an external microphone or a line in input for an audio source input. And this is great. There's a built-in GPS that includes automatic time and position updating. And GPS logging can be saved off and reviewed later. As you might expect, there's great low light sensitivity with expanded ISO ranges. There's lens peripheral illumination, chromatic aberration correction, and there's quick selectable metering modes and much more. But none of this would matter if you couldn't get great color tone. So all the customary Canon picture styles that you're used to are included in the EOS One DX Mark II with a new addition that we first saw in the 5DS and 5DSR, and that's called Fine Detail, where contrast is set lower than standard so that detailed textures and gradations come out better. By default, Fine Detail has the same saturation level as standard and basically assumes that the image will be used as is without post-processing, unlike Neutral and Faithful, for instance. There are several ways to accurately or artistically white balance the EOS One DX Mark II, some of which you're already aware of, like, you know, say, photographing a white card and selecting that JPEG image from in camera and using the white balance shift and bracket graph, using the white balance presets or, say, dialing in Kelvin settings to your liking. But there's another that I'm growing really fond of, and mainly because these digital cameras have gotten so good at it, and that's auto white balance. If you're in a dynamic situation and you're changing locations right and left, give auto white balance a try. Auto white balance gives you a couple of white balancing options first introduced in the 5DS and the 5DSR. When you use auto white balance and you shoot under tungsten lighting, you can select ambience priority to retain some of the warm color tones, or you can use white priority to eliminate most of the warm tones. It's really cool. Okay, that's an overview of the video features in this new EOS 1DX Mark II. Ultimately, you're going to have to try one yourself to get a feel for all this and see what the camera can really do. So be sure to visit the Canon website for more information. I'm Brent Ramsey. Thanks for watching.